Ronald Bernard, it's delightful to be with you here in Amsterdam. You're welcome. I'm very happy you were taking this uh, trip, this heavy trip. A heavy trip indeed. We had some extraordinary uh, forces appeared to be trying to prevent this meeting. Yeah. But uh, look what a beautiful day it is and how wonderful to look you in the eyes. Yes. Yes, it's very nice to meet you too. You know, Illuminati, this is the, the, the great trigger word. Everyone is fascinated by this idea. Yeah. And uh, people like you have experienced firsthand the reality of this high echelon, this mm -hmm. Babylonian priesthood mm -hmm. that operates from behind the curtain and yeah. controls the destiny and the fate of humanity. It's a reality for you. It's not a, it's not a, a joke. No, it is not. Let's talk about Illuminati for a second. Do you believe that the 8,500 Illuminati members have some connection to the sealed indictments in Washington? I don't have a crystal ball, but for sure, for sure, the 8,000, 8,500 people who are really running the show are connected with the people who are in that envelope. But I don't think the 8,000, 8,500 will be in the envelope. I think in the best way, because they are always willing to sacrifice. Let's talk about the relationship of the BIS, the Bank of International Settlements, wow. to the Vatican, London, and Washington principalities. Yeah. Historically, people think that it's all about Vatican City, London City, and Washington City. But uh, you've been speaking about the BIS, the Bank of International Settlements, and that's yeah. what we should be looking at. Yeah. Well, the, the <laughs> I know, I know a lot of people in this world, uh, especially in alter alternative news, people who are aware, they're looking at uh, Washington, D.C., at this free state part. I mean, we are talking about Vatican, uh, city of London, and, and Washington, D.C., about free states. The Washington part is the military, the finance city of London, and the spiritual Vatican. Vatican. But most of the people, they think they are the main powers, the main tools, but it's not. The BIS is above them. It's also a free state, but the finance is the regulator, the investor, who are um, putting also the programs in through well, let's say the game. The whole world is a game. So all the inflationary mechanisms and the interest rate mechanisms is all rigged through it, this. It's, 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 it's the channel, the BIS is the channel who arrange in the multi-levels they have. You only see the official part, of course, like they have the board, for example. Eh? Um, the board, the official board is... I mean, the BIS is the clubhouse of all the banksters. Mm -hmm. So in the board are the president of another central bank. No, but that's all the outside. We are straight talking actually more in the direction now of shadow banking, the real world, because the official world is not the real world. The world where I was living in was a world, everything is possible. You can switch identity by day. You can fake any paper you want in this world. Mm -hmm. We create our own rules, but the rules are always coming from, let's say, upstairs. Mm. Eh? And that's the mechanism, the BIS. The BIS is the most important one. And who owns the BIS? Uh, can we identify the stakeholders? Officially, the owners of the BIS uh, are known, of course, like they're all, um, the stakeholders are all the other central banks. Like it's a, a sort of collective of owners. The collateral of a country and the wealth of a country is effect, uh, collateralized by the human beings, correct? 
Yes, it's, right. it's based on your birthright. Right. So the human being is born and is issued a birth bond or a treasury certificate, a number against that birth with yeah. a value to that. Yeah. yeah. In my lectures, I, I explain to people as well. I know about this birth certificate, certificate well, there we go with my English, this birth document. It's more easy for me. Uh, in Holland, on the moment someone is born, yeah. the father or mother is very happy to sign Surrender the, the contract. Yep. Right? Because our country is a company. Private corporation. Yes. On the, then you get a number, a BSN number. Yeah? In Dutch it's called Burger Service Number. It's a slavery number. So for you, as a Dutchman, it's a service number. For them, for the powers, it's a slavery number. Mm -hmm. And if it's about the mentality, it's about you're, 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 you're a dumb, you're, you're nothing, you're a cow. On the moment the birth certificate is created, your value is 500,000 euros. In Holland. In Holland. So... They calculated in your whole productive life, you bring to the state, you bring to the financial system, more or less in taxes and indirect taxes and other ways, you pay back the 500,000 euros roughly. So you're the value on the moment you're born. I've heard that this uh, certificates, this birth certificates, are trade on the stock market stock markets in America. Yes. In Holland, they don't do that. Okay. But in, in other countries, they do. So there, you don't know where your certificate is going. I mean, the whole financial system is arranged by law. So the top criminals of this world are, are backed with official laws. If you, if you are a parent, and your child is born, within of a few days, you have to go to... Um, and register. The record mm. re mm. to make the registrations. Otherwise, you have um, a problem because you were breaking the laws. Well, breaking the statutes, yes, not the yes. laws. Yeah, Yeah. well, for, for the most citizens, it's that they are breaking the law because that's the story they are yes, telling you. Yes, that's the you. story, exactly. That's the story you're telling yeah. you. So um, the only way to, to uh, go out of this system is um, unite mm -hmm. in a sort of cooperative. Mm -hmm. And withdraw. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Remove your attention from this yeah. game and the story because yeah. it's just a game. It it's is. just a story. Yeah. Right. Very good. I also wanted to ask if you were ever blackmailed into Illuminati circles or were you seduced into it through wealth and power and so on? Yeah, seduced, yes, uh, in, in many ways. I mean, it's quite simple. During the time you're working with them, they make scans of you. So they are searching always for your weakest point. Is that background checks and so on? Everything. 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 Everything they can get. Okay. But they never uh, were blackmailing me. I knew they have dossiers. I mean, I was also working a lot with secret services. I mean, that, that's actually obviously. Mm -hmm. If you work in, in the darkest uh, world of, of this, this financial... Um, this is the reason why I came out last year with my testimony about my life in five parts by DVM-TV to prevent that the dossiers who are still existing somewhere are coming out later on right. in my path because I, I'm walking on a path. Yes. I have a destiny. I yes. have a mission. Yes. And if this mission continues for the benefit of life and humanity, yes. 
I'm sure they will play out these cards. Mm. And if I didn't tell anything about my dark past, yes. they will play out the cards and the trust is gone. Ronald, were you educated into any of the occultic symbology? And I'm talking now about the numbers, the famous 666, 777, 776, 1776, 911. All of these numbers have tremendous significance, correct? Yeah, we, we get confronted with symbols and numbers, but the most of the knowledge I, I got was later on in my new life, in my second life. You researched it and came to understand the symbology? It was study of the theologic, theologic way, like studying the Quran, mm. uh, the Bible, the Torah, and also all these kind of things. And I started to discover that the whole creation in the four dimensions, the four dimensions we have, Earth, this life, is based on numbers. So I start to discover the real codes behind creation, that everything is, you can all bring everything back to the numbers. And then I start to discover that also the dark side I was working with is also working with all these numbers, these holy numbers, yes. yeah, this double number. Yes. But it's not knowledge I was carrying in my um, top top level working with uh, finance. Yes. We have um, different ways, different codes, but not the codes you're not talking about okay. because you're talking about a sort of holy numbers. Yes. Yes. Secret numbers yes. with power. Right. Good or bad, but they have that power. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, I know, of course, this famous 666 uh, number. And the 332. Yes. Mm. That's... Um, for example, for the skull and bones. Right. But the 666 is also a misleading number. Very much so. So let's talk about shadow banking. Yeah. Okay, because there is, uh, we're clear that there is a Masonic elite that is contained within, compartmentalized within global banking, and that elite has its own set of rules, absolutely, and is able to conduct massive transactions uh, yeah. completely off the radar screen yeah. using flash screen technology and advanced technologies that we know nothing about. Well, that's, that's um, a big part of what you're talking about is now also modern time. Right, in, yes. In, in my time, we still work with a lot of cash. And ledgers. <laughs> yeah, and, and telex. telex yeah. Um, and, and in that time, uh, the fax, telefax was just coming right. out. Uh, the first mobiles were really like with big batteries. It was not the modern time mm. like you have now. Mm. So, so actually we were more cowboys. Mm. Eh? I mean, in one of my interviews I was explaining about in a visit in Germany about trucks loaded with, with money. Yes. Iraqi dollars, with American dollars, but they were... Um, transported illegal oh, okay. because of the embargoes yes. at that time in yes. the beginning of the 90s, the embargoes, so they were illegally uh, buying and selling of oil yes. in dollars. Yes. And, and in the banking system, you have in that time to deal with a lot of cash. Later, they flow in in pallets, uh, official in the mainstream, you can find uh, 30 uh, billiards. Uh, Huge, huge amounts by planes to finance um, the Iraqi Second World yes. uh, War it was in 2003. So, and th so this was to finance the insurgencies, finance the saboteurs yeah. and the provocateurs. It, it, it's, you're talking about the real financial world. I mean, I call it the real financial world, who uh, make it able to do whatever you want in this world, because most of the people in on earth, you can buy them. Yes. You can blackmail them or buy them. Mm. It's, it's one of them. Mm. There are only a few who will resist. Yes. Because we live all in a slavery system, so, and for them it's nothing. Yes. One million not enough, ten million. Mm. And that's still a joke in the real world. Yeah, very good. So, so um, but you mentioned a group, Masonics. Mm. Um, that's a worldwide organization, but again, they are not the top. Mm -hmm. They are running a program, 
And they're like the bish, like all the others, they are listening to the boss, the eight, eight and a half thousand, the real powers. Okay. And about the real powers, it's not only earthly. Right. Stop. So the real powers behind the eight and a half thousand is we, we begin to deal with metaphysics here interdimensional intelligences, lower astral intelligences, extraterrestrial intelligences? I, di I discovered one thing about ourselves. We are multidimensional ourselves. We are uh, multidimensional and also able to uh, experience a lot of frequencies, all the frequencies. Mm. And what you can read in, in many uh, old history, well, say, say holy books and, and history about uh, native tribes and, yeah. and also, they all talk about this dualistic system. And they all talk about a light manifestation yeah. and a dark manifestation. And the financial system on this planet where I worked for is the main key, the main tool to do all the programs they want, because they have a program. And the Masonics, they have a, a spiritual mission. And they, the end goal of this whole thing is that they are following, um, maybe as one of the few groups on this earth, literally the Bible, especially also the revelations yes. about what's coming next. Yes. And you can see this in the recent history, like the rebirth of Israel. It was Palestinian, mm -hmm. Palestine, in 1948. Mm -hmm. eh? Was the, yes. the birth, rebirth. The state of Israel. The state of Israel. It was all written in the prophecies. Yes. And they are running the show. They, when I was studying theology, and I was studying the Bible, I was, was really devastated, like, wow, the miracles of God are happening here. Our almighty creator of heaven and earth is, wow, doing all this. No, it's not. So my old work in the old days, connecting with the new awareness in my new life, making matches all over the place about what's going on. And then later, people who were breaking the oath, Masonics, yeah. are making me more and more aware about this agenda. And the end game they're working on is to create the third temple in Jerusalem. Rebuild the Temple of Solomon. Exactly. The Holy Land, basically returning to this yes. Sabbatean cult. Yes, and the Masonics... Mm who were also um, working through political movements uh, like the Nazis. They started the Crystal Night in 1933 mm -hmm. or 34. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The program behind it was to get the Jews out of Europe, mm. Germany, Into especially the rich land. ones, yep. the wealthy yep. ones, yep. in the program to Palestine. Yep. But nobody wants to no move. No one wanted to go. Nobody wants to yeah. move to this desert. And this is why you get all this terror mm. in the Second and World War. And the six million figure that uh, comes out of uh, nowhere, apparently. Yeah, because uh, I, I, I cannot prove if they, these documents of the Red Cross are, are real. We've, we've investigated them as well. But if they are real, Quarter of a million. you're talking about a few hundred thousand. That's it's, it. it's still too much. Of course. But they were dying because of uh, slavery, labor, and, and diseases. Mm -hmm. But the whole program is the Nazis were working officially till 1942 mm. with the political Zionists. Yes. If the political Zionists were 100% pure Jews mm. of the 12 tribes, the original ones, yes. then I can't understand anything anymore about destroying your own people. Makes no sense. No, it's Masonic. Yeah. It's the Masonic. Black, white, black, white, yeah, black, it's white. It's the Masonic thing. And again, again, also here, the BIS was one of the main keys in financing everything on Earth. In 1930, 31, early 30s, right? That was the beginning. Mm. That was the beginning. But before the war and during the war, American industry 
was sitting there on the same table like we now, making deals with the Nazis. U.S. Standard Oil and IBM and... Uh, All these companies right. involved. Yeah. Yeah. And in the battlefield, there we have the energy. Right. There was the Blood sucking. sacrifice. They were sacrificing children. Yes. A lot. Let's talk about this. Because essentially banking is uh, uh, the mechanics of control it's, over humanity. It's the main right. one. Yes. It's really the main but one. But the objective of banking is to control and create uh, scenarios where blood sacrifice takes place. On top. Because war, disease and poverty equates to blood sacrifice at yes. the collective level. And this is all because of the bastards right. out of, who live out of this fourth dimension. Right. This is about what I call the Luciferians. Right. And they call them also jinns and the fallen angels. Right. They have so many names. But they, on the moment we have a fight, an argument who is going out of control, we create negative emotions. Yes. And they live on it. Yes. They suck on yes. it all the time because they are now also around yes. us. They are everywhere. Yes. And especially in finance, because I did it a lot. Unfortunately, I did it a lot. I was serving them like hell. Because I was in the middle of financing. Also, fi I mean, it was not my money, but I, I arranged everything for them to create wars, to create actually all the sacrifice. You transcended, you transmuted that experience, Ronald. Uh, you are pioneering precisely because you did transmute that yes, experience not, into some you know, beautiful but, chemistry. But the problem is it's still there. It's daily, it's daily there. And people, I don't know, people are not aware. People have to wake up. Let's talk about the soul contract. Let's talk about the soul compact and covenant that on, we engage. On, on, you know, with this first sample, search for it. All the world leaders are already calling for it for many years. The new world order, their new world order. That's the program. It's combined with the finance system to have us completely slaved, without of cash, all digital, to put us in a digital cave completely, deciding if they like you or not. Ah, but they never thought about uh, cryptocurrencies and blockchain, did they? They did. You believe that they're engineering all of that? You don't believe that is a natural human organic response to central banking and fiat? Is crypto and smart contracts is our way of you can find, throwing this devil off you, the back? Even in the internet you can find a white paper from the NSA from 1995. They were already describing everything you have now in present, like cryptocurrencies. It's the first and the second generation of cryptocurrencies. They have a lot of backdoors. They are not free. I'm very happy and aware that step by step, people start to choose different. Right. But about the cryptocurrencies, it was all created by secret services. Now, in the third and the fourth generations, people are taking the and tools using it. to use it Very in a good. positive way. Very good. So the, the, there are positive things okay. going, but I'm more, my reaction was more in the direction of the, in, in general, the masses, the billions of people. Yes. Who are yes. still, have no clue. And just follow, whatever. Yeah, yeah. and they have no clue yeah. about a anything because they are children. Mm. They have the inner child and they have children of their own. And we have to take care of this. Mm with all the people who are Indeed. able to do this. Ronald, I still want to talk about the soul contract. Because yes. at, at the level that the, the so-called Illuminati and these Babylonian agents are engaging a soul contract, one yes. way or the other, with these higher uh, intelligences. Yes, yeah, they want to have us permanently slaved. We understand slaved. that. How do these devils revoke that contract if they want to? How do they remove themselves from the contract? Is it possible for them to remove themselves? Times are changing. The world is changing. Many of these figures in this echelon are going to be seeing that they are on the wrong side of history. Yes. And they are going to want to transition.
Yes. Is there any chance for them to do so? Yes. How? <laughs> By the free will. The free will and making contact with the people who are already in the light manifestation. Okay. Because the group is growing. Yes. You are one of them. Yes. You are connected with many other people. I'm connected with many other people. But the, the game is over. You, game men is over. you mentioned that uh, when you were involved with this Illuminati echelon, you mentioned that you had no empathy. Yes. That you were calculating and cold and you had the capacity to make decisions here and boom, yes. no heart connection. Yes, correct? We, we even laugh about what, terrible things. What was right? What was the transition that happened to you? When? On what day? What occurred to you to bring you out of this? It was the day I die. You witnessed something. I have seen myself. And I didn't believe it. It was the day I start to be aware that I'm much more than just a slave serving an evil system. Bravo. There must have been an event, Ronald, that happened. What happened on that day? What triggered this? When you are out of your body, you don't want to come back, actually, because you start to experience a completely different life, a different world. It looks like... I have seen parts of the new world, the world we are talking about, in the other dimensions. And they can look like this, but the grass of the green is different. If you look at grass, it's just an example. Mm. You can look through the grass, and still, it's, 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 it's real, it's real grass, but you can look through it. Mm. I tried to describe it, but it's so bright. The colors are so bright. You can even feel colors. Everything is so intense. It's a completely different world. What brought about that, that uh, metaphysical, spiritual experience of this death, this transition? What was it that triggered that? My heart stopped beating. Literally? Yes. I was completely out. You were at home? Where did this happen? No, it was on my work, and they uh, called... Uh, Medical service. Yeah, uh, urgent... Ambulance. Ambulance. And yes. they resuscitated you. The only th m moment I remember, um, besides seeing how they were doing all the work yes. on my body, yes. the real wake-up coming back in consciousness was uh, a crying mother. She was the first one I, 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 I you saw, this. saw back, yeah. So in a sense, you traveled back in the realm of the archetypes and you saw many things, but this was the one that, yes. that made the impression on you, yes. the crying mother. Yeah. And this is connect, connected directly to the sacrifice of innocence. Exactly. Right. This is beautiful. Yeah. But uh, later, uh, when, because I, I uh, needed to recover in my body, especially my body, uh, even uh, the bones of my back, they have to, well, they have to repair a lot of things in, in me. But um, during this recovery time, I was also in a private clinic in Luxembourg. Mm. And the girlfriend, well, sort of girlfriend I have from that moment who supported me, uh, she showed me in a forest in the dark when I was able to walk a bit. Vuurvliegjes. Or fireflies. Fireflies. But it's an insect, no? Yeah. yeah. And... and uh, I didn't know anything about nature, so, so that was for me a mir Magical. miracle. <laughs> it was really a miracle. My first contact with nature, because before that I was only destroying That's nature. That's wonderful. So, so about the first touch I shared already, but after that there were so many other miracles happening in my life, also with other human beings, because, man, in this clinical part, my image about myself, I was so rotten. I have so, such a negative image about myself. Mm. In the clinic, I tried to destroy myself as well. Okay. It was not happening. I, I was swallowing a lot of pills to, to sleep and go away. Understand. But they took me, they, they, they took all the pills out of my body. And then there was a little boy who was also damaged in this clinic and he come to me with a little 
Bible for children, and I can't remember the words he was saying, but it was touching my heart completely. The words he was saying out of this Bible for children. And that was also a deep, deep touch inside of me. And after that, actually, my whole life started to be with presence. So you understand the power of darkness and false light, and you understand the power of forgiveness, the power of compassion, the, the last power 20, of absolution. The last 22 years, I start to discover the positive life, the, the, the light manifestations, the unconditional love. And this was growing so much that I have a direct contact Experience. build up yeah, yeah, yeah. with the source of life what I call the creator of heaven and earth, Yes, I have not a monologue, I have a dialogue. I understand. It's great. What brings us together in this world is a desire, a burning desire to end all of this shadow in our lifetime, yeah. correct? That end is. this blood sacrifice, end this blood cult, yes. end this usury, this control, this manipulation. And to prevent that the souls are remaining in the cycle. Yes, and will not be uh, captured, uh -huh. final, like in alternity, mm -hmm. because they're, they're um, heading in this program, Freemasonry program, they want us like batteries. Ultimate harvest. Yes. Yes. And we are, f based on the free will, we can choose completely different because we are free. We are 100% free. Yes. So we have to restore our position also on earth, yes. on who we are yes. as human beings, yes. because we are very, very powerful. powerful. Redemption, salvation, absolution, mm -hmm. these yeah. are the words. Yeah. And this is the science of love that we are practicing with our work. It's the only way. It is the only way. Ronald Bernard, thank you. Thank, thank you, you too.